Namaste, hello, and welcome to India Global Week 2020, Be the Revival, India and a Better New World. I'm reporting live from New Delhi, and I am super excited because we have registered attendees from 50 a day two of India Global Week, and a lot of great sessions coming up. Now, if you're taking screenshots, pictures, posting on social media, we welcome questions, your thoughts as well. I'll be tracking them. Use the hashtag Be the Revival and post. Now, with that being said, let's dive into our first session. India-Australia ties run deep in areas including economy and investment. It also includes sports diplomacy, critical minerals, and other spheres of joint interest. With that being said, let's talk a little bit more about it. Now, this session is our introductory session, Strengthening India-Australia Ties. The country partner for the session is Newland Global Group, and this session is presented by Trade and Investment Queensland, Asia Society Australia, Australia India Business Council, Asia Link Business, Global Victoria, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, WA, Australia India Institute Delhi, and Indian Link. I now give it to the moderator of this session, Ms. Natasha Jabaskar, General Manager, Newland Global Group, to begin this session. Natasha, the stage is yours. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Australia. Good morning, India. We acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the country throughout Australia and recognize their continuing connection to land, waters, and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. A very warm welcome to the Australia stream of India Global Week 2020, a historic global event to explore business, strategic, and cultural opportunities between India and the world. To re-energize and ignite optimism, to inspire action. Newland Global Group, is delighted to be the Australia in-country partner for the India Global Week, the historic event. We'd also like to express our heartfelt gratitude to Australia's stream partners, Trade and Investment Queensland, Global Victoria, Australia India Business Council, Asia Link Business, Asia Society Australia, Australia India Institute, Delhi, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Western Australia, and media partner, Indian Link. This is indeed a time for reflection, resilience, and reimagination, and to be the revival. Five months ago, none of us would have imagined that a crisis that appeared so localized and distant would affect each one of us and change our world permanently. So here we are aiming to look ahead to a better, brighter future for Australia and India amid the changing global reality. In 2014, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Australia after a gap of 28 years, in a speech to the joint sitting of parliament in Canberra, Prime Minister Modi asserted that Australia was no longer at the periphery of India's vision, but at the center of its thoughts. This sentiment has been echoed by Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Prime Minister Morrison's engagement with PM Modi's personal diplomacy through skomosas and curry has fascinated one and all. There's a conscious realization today in both countries that momentum is important to relationships and aspirations for this relationship must be matched with action. It was the need to address the execution deficit of this relationship and limited understanding about India, which led to an elaborate report commissioned by the Australian government in 2018 called the India Economic Strategy 2035. The report has set itself a target to become one of Australia's top three export markets, to make India the third largest destination in Asia for Australia outward investment, and to bring India into the inner circle of Australia's strategic partnerships. 
A reciprocal report was commissioned by the government of India, which is yet to be released, called the Australia Economic Strategy. The energy and entrepreneurship of the Indian diaspora in Australia is expected to play a big role in building these economic linkages, highlighting the importance of 700,000 Indian origin population uh, in Australia. Adding to that, there's also a strong geopolitical content. Australia and India are situated in the most dynamic region of the Indo-Pacific. That is the center of economic and strategic gravity today. The recent historic virtual summit between Australian and Indian ministers witnessed another milestone in this relationship. The signing of a comprehensive strategic partnership between the two nations. Agreements on cyber enabled critical technology cooperation, cooperation in mining and processing of critical and strategic minerals, agreements on cooperation in defense, science, and technology. India's economic growth, its appetite for resources, energy demand, skill development, technical know-how, and investment has made it a market full of potential and opportunities. But can Canberra take advantage and will New Delhi reciprocate? What do both countries need to do differently to enhance the speed and scope prevalent in the relationship, which should be driven by timelines and tangibles across different sectors of engagement? Can Australia and India take advantage of the obvious synergies that exist between them and more importantly, make them work? In the upcoming sessions of the Australia Stream of India Global Week 2020, you will watch intense discussions across strategic and economic imperatives of the Australia-India relationship with our distinguished speakers uh, on the Indo-Pacific, reviving the manufacturing sector, bilateral economic strategies, sports diplomacy, mining, and critical minerals. These eminent speakers will share their opinions and vision on what needs to be done differently to take the Australia and their relationship to a higher trajectory of growth, led by mutual obligation of timelines and tangible outcomes. The word engagement is crucial and should and must become a permanent national project for both countries. We are delighted to have with us His Excellency. High Commissioner A. Gitesh Sharma. High Commissioner A. Gitesh Sharma joined the Indian Foreign Service in 1986. He worked in Ministry of External Affairs as Under Secretary East Europe and Director Central Asia. Mr. Sharma's overseas assignments include Indian missions in Russia, Ukraine, Hong Kong, Pakistan, and United Kingdom. He has been Ambassador of India to Uzbekistan and High Commissioner of India in Fiji. He was also Joint Secretary External Relations in the Department of Atomic Energy and was Secretary West in the Ministry of External Affairs until taking over as India's High Commissioner to Australia in November 2019. A very warm welcome to you, High Commissioner A. Gitesh Sharma. Thank you, Natasha. Delighted to be here. And uh, I'm really very, very appreciative of India Inc. for setting this up. One way to beat the pandemic is to keep doing what we are good at, which is to engage with each other. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, High Commissioner. So get straight into uh, the conversation. Uh, my first question to you, uh, High Commissioner. Uh, India today has acquired a very, very significant space uh, in the diplomatic and the economic uh, paradigm at a global level. Uh, how, how do you really see India's place, transforming India's place in the changing world, and what strides India has made? Uh, well, Natasha, I, uh, as I have spent uh, years in diplomacy, the sense I get is uh, that those uh, who have been in the business of dealing with India uh, have largely tended to deal in parts. Uh, India has been around for almost 5,000 years, and some thought it was spices, some thought it was religion, some thought it was philosophy of some kind, silks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think uh, there is a need to put together a composite uh, picture of India, top-down view. And those, those individual parts, when they 
uh, you know, views into that uh, composite picture, it looks very different and it looks uh, interesting. And uh, if you look that, uh, you know, India is typically, uh, you know, you could say it's a developing country, but uh, it's not the classic kind of uh, developing country. Anyone looking, this is a business focused meet. So, and businessmen going into India, uh, if you're looking at India as just a developing country, uh, I think that might not be the entirely true picture. And uh, somewhere along, you may need to take into account some, uh, you know, some realities. Uh, India has, in fact, uh, some sectors which are pretty advanced, and uh, you know, we could compete with the best in the world. If you look at information technology, for instance, if you look at the pharmaceutical in the, uh, in the industry, if you look at the healthcare, uh, Indian hospitals are filled with uh, people from all over the world coming for uh, treatment. This may surprise many people, actually. Uh, if you look at the uh, space uh, sector, we are with the, ranked with the best. If you look at uh, the uh, nuclear power sector, uh, you know we can we can actually export a, a very competitive reactor, probably the most competitive reactor. You know, so if you put this uh, picture, then it looks very uh, different. Uh, if you look at agriculture, I know I think it's often not realized uh, that India has probably all the climates in the world. Therefore, we can grow everything in the world. It just requires us to put our minds and uh, energies into growing anything. And uh, you find that Indian agriculture has also made a very robust growth. Of course, uh, you know, when we talk, uh, it's not that we have achieved everything and, uh, you know, that's it. But I think, the, you know, we have acquired enough kind of areas and which provide the kind of engine like, uh, you know, uh, drive, uh, which drives our economy forward. But there are many areas which can be improved with cooperation, we can uh, develop uh, things uh, better, more efficient systems can be set up with international experience, international exposure. And agriculture is a typical uh, area and that's very uh, you know, relevant to Australia, that with Australia's own uh, capabilities, immediately I would love to flag this uh, one item. Uh, we are also, uh, if you look at uh, the business uh, sector, uh, there, there, there is this feeling that India is just, uh, you know, uh, one of those different difficult uh, countries. Look, in five years, uh, we have jumped places as the ease of uh, business is uh, concerned from somewhere around 142 to 63 in uh, last year. It couldn't be just uh, done without government putting a huge effort. So there have been, therefore, uh, several kinds of uh, achievements, some several success stories, and India will always uh, be there among the top countries. Uh, in fact, I should share, Natasha, this uh, one little, uh, you know, nugget which I picked up in Australia during my seven months. Uh, you know, one columnist wrote that uh, India will be that universal countries among the small group of exclusive uh, universal countries, which probably means uh, to him and certainly to me, India will be everywhere. You know, we'll be in Antarctic, we'll be in space, uh, we'll do everything that any other country can do. So when you deal with India, you have to realize that uh, the either we are already, uh, you know, doing that activity or pretty close to achieving uh, uh, presence in uh, certain kinds of sectors which we we had not earlier entered. So that's the kind of uh, the huge dimension, the composite nature. It's a kind of complete package uh, moving together. Uh, so that's something that I think uh, needs to be taken into account. It is interesting you say that, uh, High Commissioner Sarma, that how India actually encompasses so many components and it's uh, it actually uh, is a big advantage for any country to engage with India in the current circumstances. And uh, having said that, uh, even yesterday when Prime Minister Modi categorically his inaugural address at the India Global Week 2020 said that uh, how India offers an opportunity to three countries and India is going to lead the revival uh, in this these unprecedented times of this pandemic uh, how what exactly in your opinion that one significant feature of the australia india relations for you i think it's uh, uh, it's really uh, a very exciting time to be uh, a witness to uh, history in the making we all like to see these turning points and uh, forever we have been close but this is the moment re really uh, the virtual summit uh, which uh, took place uh, uh, last month, uh, we elevated our relations to uh, comprehensive and strategic. And these are not just not words. The uh, comprehensive means uh, we can work together 
in almost everything, almost every sphere of activity. It shows a great uh, a deal of maturity in our relations. And uh, strategic uh, would tend to mean long term. We're not there to make one deal and take off. You know, the idea is that you know we see enough uh, you know of relevance to us, enough synergies and uh, enough opportunities for each other, and it's important to uh, nurture them. Uh, having said that, uh, I would also say that uh, not uh, everything can move or will move at the same speed. Uh, right now, if there's an honest uh, assessment made. Uh, political uh, relations are fantastic, simply fantastic. I mean, at all levels, the understanding, the kind of knowledge of each other's uh, interests, the respect for each other, uh, that is uh, something which is really sets tone. The personal relations at the highest level, uh, you find business also uh, doing well, but a long distance uh, still to go somewhere along the way. You know, the people to people relations, sometimes cricket does definitely ca capture the imagination whenever there is a series, uh, ongoing series. Uh, so we are never uh, far away, but uh, there are different uh, aspects to a relationship. And, uh, you know, the at the political level, it's uh, really, uh, you know, in the top league right now. And that's the way it's going to go. But at other levels, we need uh, to take, uh, you know, to stock and keep uh, pushing, driving, helping and uh, achieve that kind of uh, success that we uh, so, uh, so desire. Uh, Hi, Commissioner Sarma, there are many uh, thinkers who say that uh, Australia-India relation has largely been like a roller coaster ride. It goes up and it comes down. Uh, uh, from that perspective, uh, you know, this year has largely been very momentous. Uh, you know, starting from 2018, when we saw uh, uh, the uh, India economic strategy, the release of the India economic strategy to 2035, followed by a reciprocal report, which uh, uh, will come out, the Australia economic strategy, also the virtual summit, as you mentioned, and a uh, visit of the trade minister with a, a business delegation uh, to India uh, in uh, February this year. So there has been a series of events. Uh, what, in your opinion, has really led to this revival? I think uh, the... Uh, the understanding at uh, high levels, we were never far, far away. Uh, let me be very clear on that. Uh, you know, in some ways, we have some common elements which kept that uh, relationship going. But to add a little zip to this relationship, you need something more, a little spark, a little extra energy. Uh, I think uh, the uh, this international environment, as it uh, started changing sometime around the 90s, uh, you know, the, that provided a lot of opportunities to uh, engage with uh, each other, uh, not only in general way, but on specific uh, issues. We found, uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, there were certain, like uh, you say, the climate issue, the issue of terrorism, uh, you know, there was a huge change in uh, the way uh, Australia, they took a very courageous uh, decision sometime around 2011 on the nuclear, uh, on the uranium uh, supply. I think a psychological barrier was uh, broken in a way, I, you know, we can't underestimate. And uh, more importantly, uh, it was bipartisan, you know. It's, so that's uh, the amazing part of the uh, story. So it's like, uh, you know, dam burst and then it's free for all, everybody, uh, can take advantage of those uh, opportunities, whether it is business or medical or science or culture. You know, once uh, you see that uh, the lead has been given, and uh, it's not been exactly a roller coaster. In 10 years, we have uh, moved from strategic to comprehensive strategic partnership. I think uh, that's uh, an achievement which should not be underestimated. We have been pretty uh, consistent. Uh, we've been alive to the opportunities. We have been sensitive to each and we've been respectful. So I think that's really set the tone. In addition, I would uh, say that a greater understanding of each other. Uh, you know, uh, of course, one can mention that uh, uh, during this period, there was a diaspora element also, which came in in a big way in, uh, in Australia. So these uh, things uh, really, I think, started uh, coming together, uh, you know, and becoming a, a driver or engine, as I've said before. So it's, it's really a pretty steady growth, I would say. Okay, so High Commissioner, uh, Prime Minister uh, Morrison, while signing the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership uh, uh, this year, you know, uh, or during the virtual uh, summit, uh, stated that it will actually be in a he'll help us to create the trust uh, between both nations, and this trust 
will further help us uh, to elevate our trading relationship between both countries. As far as the economic potential of Australia India relations uh, are concerned, uh, uh, it is actually going up, but we haven't re reached our true potential. From that perspective, uh, uh, what businesses in both countries should be doing right to enhance this relationship? With Prime Minister uh, Morrison. The highest level and uh, not only to, uh, trust, uh, there is a great deal of, uh, uh, you know, desire to uh, be more respectful of the other side's uh, concerns and needs. Don't forget that uh, during the pandemic, uh, when there was a, a you know, run on uh, global supplies, that uh, uh, we did uh, apply to Australia certain kinds of, uh, you know, items they were uh, so seeking the source. Uh, it can only be between uh, uh, special friends and uh, between the two countries which deeply trust uh, each other. As far as uh, you know, business opportunities are concerned, yes, uh, you know, Minister Simon Birmingham's visit was very important. Uh, fortunately, it was just before the uh, you know lockdown of sorts, so it did take place when it was uh, due. Uh, we could not receive Prime Minister Morrison when uh, he was to visit uh, for very understandable reasons, but that engagement has been uh, you know uh, has been continuing uh, using various means technology etc cetera, etc cetera. so so that's the important thing that uh, we won't allow something like the pandemic to come in our way as far as doing business together you mentioned about uh, the Vergis uh, report that itself i think apart from the content it also uh, reflects the intent itself that uh, australia is looking to do a serious uh, kind of evaluation uh, of uh, business opportunities in India. And then the Vagis report uh, was very, very central in this uh, exercise and the need to see how it can be uh, implemented, monitored. So we definitely would look forward to working with Australia. As far as the mirror report uh, on our side, the Vadva report, and I, I do believe that uh, Ambassador Vadva will himself get a chance to talk about it. But uh, uh, I think when the report, uh, you know, my sense, what I could share is, it was almost ready and uh, you know it was just the ribbon had to be just uh, you know cut and uh, presented but uh, you know the world has changed a bit around us and when you do a huge exercise a very big exercise and uh, you know you want it to be relevant uh, you know as soon as you uh, present it if it's outdated or not fully reflective of the uh, change circumstances uh, you know i think that was really the sense it is not a, a reflection on the indian intent it is uh, it is only a very realistic uh, kind of uh, you know decision or uh, you know a step that we will look at it very carefully to see if anything needs a little more fine tuning as far as the uh, uh, businessmen uh, you know uh, uh, concern i think the chambers the different uh, associations are also doing a great uh, job but let me uh, speak in more generic uh, terms that i have uh, you know tremendous respect for businessmen and uh, the same it is with two plus two is the same everywhere india australia and in space and in, on mars and businessmen when they see a uh, good business proposition i i think they will go for it uh, the the issue really is familiarity i mean if you sit far away and uh, you know you have these mental blocks and you keep thinking that it's a difficult uh, uh, you know, country to enter, and uh, I think uh, something is uh, you know lacking uh, there. But uh, I have tremendous confidence in Indian businessmen. I have even more confidence in Australian businessmen that uh, you know these kind of uh, uh, you know the preliminary thoughts and all. I mean, you have to really dive. You have to be uh, resilient. You have to uh, stay put there. You have to fight it there. Business are known to be thick skinned and do it. And uh, having said that, our Prime Minister talked about red carpet yesterday. And uh, this red carpet uh, is, is, is something real that, uh, see, when we have a democratic kind of uh, government in both countries, when we are democratic, it doesn't, it's just not a terminology. Our decisions, our decision making process also, several things go into this uh, decision making process inputs from the people, from the industry sectors. From the community so they all go into the feed into this decision making uh, process and uh, it's the same actually if you close your eyes 
and just imagine Australia, India, there won't be much difference. I mean, the processing, paperwork, the uh, notings, uh, they would probably be similar environmental concerns or, you know, any other cost factors, efficiency. It would just be the same. So I, I would strongly encourage our uh, Australian colleagues to do just what they are good at, which is really to dive and uh, to uh, you know look at, to hold that hand, which is waiting for you at the other end and, uh, you know, things will move. Uh, uh, believe me, you're not the first, uh, the, even uh, 15 years, 20 years back, the IT industry also, all the top majors came. And a lot has changed till uh, in those 20 odd years that, uh, you know, we have moved on and things have become more efficient. Uh, the digital uh, space has also uh, introduced transparencies and efficiencies. So really, I think uh, if I say in, uh, in a very, very blunt manner, there's simply no excuse. There's no scope for failure. You just have to take advantage of each other's opportunities and you have to keep at it. And I have little doubt that that is really going to be the future uh, of our uh, business and economic ties. Rightly so. So there can be no excuse when it comes to uh, engaging with the business opportunities. And we are already aware that there are several countries uh, like uh, the investments that are coming in from Japan, US, uh, uh, also uh, from uh, um, several other Southeast Asian nations uh, who have uh, invested and the many companies which are right now uh, in India. Uh, the workers report categorically states that patience and perseverance uh, are two components that you need uh, when you enter the Indian market and in fact the report also gives in 90 recommendations uh, to follow uh, once uh, a business uh, plans to enter uh, the Indian market. Uh, uh, now the role of the Indian for uh, the High Commissioner, you mentioned uh, 700,000 strong Indian diaspora in Australia, and this number is actually growing by the day. Uh, how do you think that India can utilize the potential of the Indian diaspora in Australia to enhance this relationship further? Yeah, it's a very uh, interesting question and a uh, very pertinent question. And uh, Indian diaspora is uh, definitely very uh, special. Uh, a lot of India's uh, own achievements uh, in the last few years, last few decades, uh, they reflect in the quality of our, uh, you know, people going outside. And they're really highest achievers. And, and uh, look at some of India's educational institutions that they're top notch, you know, although we need, uh, uh, you know, upgrading elsewhere and we can talk about that but uh, many of them who have gone it's not just Australia in the most competitive of competitive societies the world's most competitive societies you'll find Indians uh, uh, occupying many of the top slots it, this these are COVID-19 days if you turn on CNN the medical experts you see uh, you know many of them are really uh, you, know, are, uh, you know people who are homegrown kind of students have gone and done higher education and stayed on and Today, their face of uh, uh, CNN on medical and uh, technological issues. So, Indian diaspora is, uh, in that sense, uh, highly skilled and highly capable. And that is similarly uh, the experience of uh, Australia as well. That uh, Australia is a very competitive society. And the great thing about Australia is, if you're good, you're respected. I mean, that's simple as that. You know, it, it gives that kind of uh, opportunity. Uh, so you just have to be good. You have to be the best and that's it, you know, no questions asked and you get all that respect and all those opportunities that you need to flower. But at the same time, let me say one more thing about uh, the Indian uh, diaspora that uh, they integrate well, you know, the, uh, the message that goes always from us as well, from the government. It's possible we all have multiple identities in, in life. We do several things, uh, you know, at the same time. But uh, you can be a very good Australian, or this country provides those uh, great opportunities, and it's a diverse society. Uh, you know, it's a very, very kind of uh, rich uh, culture with so many different uh, cultures. You know, which are contributing to making a composite culture of Australia. Uh, we find that Indian uh, Indians who come to Australia, apart from their, you know, work achievements. They also integrate well, they respect the local uh, ethos. So that's something which is uh, special and uh, probably uh, makes them that bridge that we keep talking. Of course, they uh, cherish their uh, Indian roots as well. 
and uh, that's uh, again as i said that it's possible to have multiple identities so when you have uh, you know a stock of uh, 700000 people who know australia well and who know india well i think uh, you've already started with a, a home advantage and uh, and a business community what are you waiting for and uh, you know here is uh, this uh, body of knowledge uh, to to leverage when you're uh, going into india but even if you didn't know anyone you know uh, you just don't know india is uh, absolutely welcoming and uh, you know it's one of the most friendly countries but having said about uh, diaspora i don't want to leave it at that uh, i want to add one more element you know that uh, there are several elements of uh, australian uh, culture also you find that increasingly people in india are also appreciating and uh, when we talk of this great uh, cricket rivalry uh, people don't realize that even cricket has changed uh, you know uh, i come from city of hyderabad and our uh, hyderabad sunrise sunrises is uh, captained by warner so you know uh, you'd find uh, our heroes becoming australia's heroes and the other way around so it's, it's been all mixed but all for uh, in a good cause which is to bring us uh, together we have enough people now uh, with a great stake in uh, in the relationship very glad uh, i commissioner that you mentioned cricket because we have a very interesting session uh, today at uh, 4:30 uh, on sports diplomacy where steve war uh, is also joining in and he'll tell us more about his experiences in india his journey uh, uh, and the whole spirit of cricket and what this means for australia india uh, relations uh, uh, and of course as you rightly said about the role of the diaspora how it actually it is a living bridge uh between uh, both nations uh, uh moving ahead uh, high commissioner i remember uh, you know uh, in your welcome reception at the sydney consulate uh, you had mentioned that you had very fond memories of uh, studying uh, in in a school which was run by australian missionaries uh, and uh, your tutors were all uh, australians and uh, uh, you you feel uh, you felt uh, very delighted when you got uh, uh, posting here as a high commissioner uh education remains a very very important and a flagship sector between australia and uh india do you see international students uh, uh coming back uh, and the prospects of international students coming back uh, to australia uh, as far as the education journey is concerned australia has some of the uh, world's top uh, educational institutions i definitely know that but i think more people in india should know that you know uh, so we have what 100000 uh students here uh, at least at peak uh, time about 100000 students were there and uh, but uh, as uh, the word goes around people read on the net and uh, also those who have gone back spread the message i think they would love to come in uh, droves i think it's very competitive uh, uh, you know the uh, the australian in terms of uh, similar opportunities elsewhere so uh, australia would be a great uh, destination so as i said that uh, it's not just uh, you know when we say comprehensive strategic partnership it's not a deal we're looking at a partnership and uh, it's about uh, the whole uh, business of uh, you know cooperating and collaborating in uh, in the education sector um, so we would love to see even australian students uh, go to india there are certain um, very very the indian institutes of technology for instance indian institutes of management they are absolutely world class uh but there are also many other institutions in india which require a great deal of uh, upgradation so i think uh, that's where uh, you know australia can uh, come in in a huge way and uh, you know work uh, with us and uh, develop those kinds of uh, educational institutions to higher uh, levels of delivery when the quality and efficiency are also factored in so i think there is a uh, immense uh, scope to bring us together and uh, much of our higher education also is conducted in english so you'll find uh, uh, opportunity even in terms of syllabi you know uh, perhaps course content as said mathematics science uh, really developing the course uh, curriculum there would be uh, huge opportunities and it's really by uh, looking at this in terms of partnerships then uh, in terms of one of uh, deals i think that would be uh, it's a very nice way of uh, uh moving uh, ahead but i think uh, this is really a promising uh, sector and uh, as you you started about my own experience uh, i started i never thought one day i would be in australia i never i did uh, learn to make boomerangs sitting in india uh, but one day i never thought i would come here but i do uh, have deep respect for australian teaching australian teachers 
the quality of their education from personal uh, experience uh, point of view and all those students who have studied here they also are extremely uh, appreciative of all the opportunities that are provided and i wouldn't uh, let it uh, end this part without saying that in the midst of all this covid-19 uh, crisis when australia like any other country was in deep crisis uh, a, a great deal of effort was made to make our students comfortable and wanted so i convey my appreciation for this thank you for that high commissioner and we are indeed very privileged to have you here uh, high commissioner uh, uh, is there a move uh, to open uh, free trade agreement uh, the sikar talks between australia and india there is uh, uh, you know we in the uh, virtual summit itself it was agreed that uh, we can start working on this uh, track and uh, so we are already in uh, contact uh, for a comprehensive economic cooperation agreement uh, so th this is a process which has uh, you know which is ongoing and uh, we have uh, contacts notwithstanding uh, travel restrictions but uh, both governments have realized uh, they need to work on this so i, I think uh, it it is going in the right direction Uh, out of my personal curiosity uh, high commissioner uh, we have seen that the the report uh, the vergus report categorically states that australia wants india to bring it uh, you know as as in its top three export markets and this whole desire to uh, bring india closer to australia uh, someone uh, like you who's been with the ministry of external affairs for a long time where does india really see australia in terms of its international priorities because it is generally believed that india's focus has more has has been more with the neighborhood countries and the major powers where does australia stand in terms of priority if one has to put number i am high commissioner here and always under pressure to develop uh, deliver with the country which is top of uh, india's priorities so it is uh, really in the very top league uh, right now and that's been the as i said a huge transformation in our relations but the economic aspect i think which you mentioned uh, and an india which aspires to grow fast and an india which uh, whose economy is expanding rapidly cannot just expand on its own it needs uh, resources it needs investments it needs technology it needs upgradation of uh, skills uh, it cannot do it in uh, isolation so when we talk of red carpet it's really with uh, an eye one eye on, on uh, ourselves and certainly uh, and uh, another eye on uh, those who can friends who can uh, be partners uh, with us uh, remember one thing that uh, uh, which has uh, tr changed india in the last uh, few years that uh, the good services tax for instance you know it uh, it provides for uniform taxes uh, over the entire uh, 1.3 billion population and uh, you know if you look at uh, europe and if you look at other kinds of uh, uh, common kind of markets you know uh, india is huge and uh, if you say that it's only you know in terms of prosperity is less it can only go in the northern direction right so it's a, it's a it's a huge economy and if you can seamlessly move from one to the other uh you just have to enter it and that's it you know so this this has transformed the indian experience uh, certainly uh, uh it's it has a transforming uh, effect so that has dramatically changed the way that uh, people will engage with india many sectors which were earlier closed or partially open they have been opened you know it's it's uh, it's a kind of a sign of indian economy maturing i talked to, if i said you know there's nothing which is uh, uniform for india you say that we need investment in um, education but are there also world class educational institution in india everything has an exception like a large uh, economy you can produce an example for for anything but the fact is we need a partner and uh, australia provides that comprehensive experience any sector you know even uh, covid 19 you know you have the technologies the pharmaceutical companies you are among the largest vaccine producers in the world we have our own uh, medical research team working uh, how can uh, you know you do a medical research without factoring in 1.3 billion people so so really uh, that kind of uh, synergy is there so i think the business opportunity has only expanded so uh, the vergis report is welcome and uh, you know for for india always australia will have a very important place 
Right. So a rising aspirational India needs uh, advanced goods and services, as you said. And uh, Australia, of course, can be a dependable partner in this journey with uh, greater cooperation, collaboration, and of course, uh, consistency. It can be a development anchor uh, when it comes to building a new India, transforming India. And we have seen slew of reforms uh, in the Indian growth story uh, in the last few months and also previously in the last few years where India has taken this journey head on to uh, develop and to create. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, more such co collaboration between Australia and uh, India. Thank you very much, High Commissioner, for joining us uh, uh, in the India Global Week uh, introductory session uh, and uh, giving us uh, your insightful thoughts uh, on where this relationship is headed and what more both uh, uh, countries at political business uh, and uh, also at a geostrategic level uh, can do together. Pleasure to have you uh, with us uh, today. Up next, uh, in the next session, uh, we have uh, the Indo-Pacific being discussed by uh, senior strategic experts. We'll talk about Australia and India's strategic relationship. Thank, Thank you. you.